up on that developing story and we'll keep on updating you and every detail that we get now i want us to talk about the hospitality industry now alion had told you that we want to talk about the post covid 19 hospitality industry are we where we are supposed to be are we making progress in getting back to where we were pre covid 19 and joining me for that conversation is charles Gok, who is the managing director air travel and related studies center good morning and thank you so Hi, much Ashley. for joining <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Karibu sana. <laughs> Asante. I love your energy considering it's cold outside. Yeah, thanks. And great studios you have here. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Very happy to be here. Oh, Karibu. I could come here over and over again. Uh, anytime. Very hospitable, right from the gate. <laughs> That resonates very well in my industry. You're welcome yeah? anytime. <laughs> All right, so let's get to the conversation. Yes. Of course, when you're talking about the hospitality industry, yes. so many people want to know because of what we experienced in 2020, 2021, and after. Are we back to where we were? Globally, others are faster than us in getting back. Yes. At Air Travel and Related Study Center, where I teach and so on, we are members of IATA. Mm -hmm. And IATA is saying, as far as airlines are concerned, African airlines are lagging behind in getting back to pre-COVID levels. And why is that? Uh, many factors. Uh, many factors, finance. I don't know whether you know that we only contribute to 2% of uh, the world's uh, traffic. All African airlines. Only 2% of Those the world's traffic. Those are worrying numbers. Yeah, that's, that's quite worrying. But we are slow in doing it. Mm -hmm. We are slow in catching up. But the rest, uh, are almost catching up. What happened, uh, Ashley, is that, of course, you know, we had a shutdown. Airlines, hotels, uh, tour companies, name it. And uh, a, f a half of those who are affected never got back uh, to their businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, some businesses, of course, closed and the human resources, only half uh, got back. Uh, a bit slow uh, in Kenya compared to the rest of the world. Actually, our saving grace, I must say, has been the domestic tourism, mm. where people are venturing into the Mara, Moseli, Savo, and of course, along the coast. With this vibrant middle class level, that was our saving grace. But we should, we should be somewhere above where we are at the moment, with more effort, and of course, uh, less disruptions, like, sorry, mandamano. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Does not make it look good at all. Yeah, for, for those, sorry for cutting you short, but yes. to whoever is watching and they're wondering, mandamano, yes. how? Maybe you can elaborate that. Oh, you know, what happens is uh, clients, the visitors that you see coming to the country, book their safaris one year, eight months, or even two years in advance, and many of them will pay even for it. Mm -hmm. They have taken leave. Uh, to get into the country or to come and enjoy our beautiful country. Yeah. So when anything negative about a country is mentioned, they have taken their leave, it's very easy for them to say, oh, let us not risk with Kenya. Mm -hmm. Let's do Tanzania, for example. Let's do Zambia or even South Africa, for example. It's the same lion, the same leopard, the same mm -hmm. cheetah, the same giraffe. So why risk in our country? So those things are negative pointers. Uh, in our country, and they don't help at all. Okay. People want smooth holidays, they've paid for it, they want to get back in one piece. And uh, anything that looks sensitive, they don't come. Okay. So, so Mandavano is recently. Yeah. Oh, yeah so, it's yeah. largely not to blame. Not what to blame. are we doing wrong in general? If I could be honest, after 20 years of experience in tourism mm. and hospitality, I think our product is tired. Okay. Uh, the beach. The wildlife safari, wildlife safari is excellent, coming to see our wildlife in its natural habitat. That's fine. But this was much more practical and appreciated by those who left the country immediately after colonization, after our independence. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones who had a kind of an attachment. That's in the 60s. Yes, in the 60s and 70s. You wouldn't tell me actually that their grand kids are still having the same attachment to wildlife and so on and so forth. And the world has evolved. Now we're talking about YouTube. You can see all those movies about the Mara out of Africa, about Amboseli, the hunting, the killing, and all that. It's mm. the high time that you talked about alternative you know, touristic attractions. And we have them. Uh, we can do, besides beach and uh, wildlife, we can do trekking safaris, we can do walking safaris. We have the second highest mountain in Africa, Mount Kenya. Mm -hmm. We do nine to 12,000 clients a year. Our neighbors here, Kilimanjaro, in Tanzania, they do thirty to 40,000. So we concentrate on marketing more or less the same thing. Mm. And that does not uh, do good for us. I, I saw South Africa overtake us. They are younger in tourism like, uh, than us. They got independence in uh, 1996, 1994. Yeah. 
And uh, of course, from zero, they are now on 5.4 million. And where are we? Yeah, we are on 1.7, 1.8. Wow. Yes, the gap between us is so wide and large that we have to diversify our product. Okay. Product offering is not quite diversified and we must do it. When you talk about diversifying, yes. of course, this is something everyone assumes it's natural, it's ah, normal. Ah. You know, even in our day to day, you know, activities, ah. when something doesn't go right, you yes. diversify or change. Yes. So yes. then, what do we need to do? Is it the policies? Is it re strategizing, going back to the table and start, you know, from magical Kenya? Uh -huh. Everything uh -huh. all together, we, we what must, do we need we to do? We must go back to the basics. Uh, 15, 20 years ago, we were very vibrant about marketing the Western Circuit, for example, mm -hmm. Kakamega Forests, uh, the Lake region itself, Mount Elgon, Kericho tea plantations, and so on. We don't, I don't hear that. I don't hear a lot of that at the moment. And yet, we want to diversify. That's one way. But remember that uh, private uh, entities like tour companies and airlines cannot get into an area where there's no infrastructure. Airports must be built, we must have hotels coming in, we must have roads that are leading to those uh, uh, touristic attraction areas. If not, then we don't get the diversity. Why are we not promoting our athletes, our runners, where they come from? Look at sports tourism. It's a big, big, big deal. Everywhere you go in the world, and you say you're from Kenya, oh, it's so where you can run. Yeah, you they run naturally very fast. assume that. Yes, but how many of us are taking care of? Clients who like to come and see where is it that they come from? What do they eat? How do they live? What kind of terrain do they go through every day? Mm -hmm. So that's, that, that one you're not doing. So the beach, and also that's fine, but we need to do more than you're doing at the moment. So that in its sense says that change needs to come and it needs to come not just at the top, yes. but from down bottom yes, up, yes. Yeah? if I may, I, yes, if I may up. use I that. I know so many two operators who are my friends mm -hmm. who like to venture into all these off the beaten track areas but they can't there's no accommodation there's no road that leads there there are no airports or airstrips to get to those places we get stuck that way yeah and you get quite a lot of inquiries on those off the beaten tracks but we say not well not quite developed at the moment we are not selling that at the moment and the products are very tired are the products that they the infrastructure that, that used to be there those days mm -hmm. is actually very down at the moment so then does that mean when we are going back to the drawing table we need to go back to those who are, want to venture into the hospitality industry in general and if we're doing that how does that affect the courses that people take we are very lucky actually to have a very vibrant youth i'm dealing with the youth who finish high school they are luckier than you are. At the moment, they, they know that besides the traditional courses that you know, they have other options. They can take courses in cabin crew, they can take courses in hotel management, they yeah. can be chefs, uh, they could do air cargo. Air cargo, actually, we have never, it, has, it never went down even uh, during COVID itself. Because instead of going to uh, pick up your, you know, your shipments in China, now you'd send somebody to do it. Yeah, and they would be shipped. You know, it never, never slowed down. Mm -hmm. So air cargo is one major frontier that our youth uh, should be looking at. Look at tour guidings. I think you, you, you notice that uh, the current crop of our tour guides are now in their 50s and uh, yeah. more or less. So we need to re-engineer that and inject fresh blood into how guiding is done in this country. And they have done a very good job. They have set quite some very high standards. So for the youth who are finishing high school, uh, on a year to year basis, mm -hmm. they need to understand that they need to go to an institution where they'll be taught on how to replace those who have left the industry and even to forge uh, the industry to move forward. Uh, hotel managers, I'm sure you know, you have, still have expatriates from other countries getting into a country who manage our five-star hotels, and there's nothing wrong with them because you're not yet there. The same to chefs. Most of the chefs that you find in our five-star hotels, name them. Mm -hmm. uh, many of them are actually expatriates. And the same guides. We have uh, people who come in with their tourists and their tour leader as well. Uh, so that what you do is more or less the driving and very little guiding. Yeah. Uh, and I can go on and on and on. You know that our cabin crew student, our cabin crew, uh, if you go to Emirates or Qatar or, or Etihad, mm. you won't find, you won't miss a Kenyan in any given flight. True. Uh, why? We are known for hard work. We are known for no accent. They say we do not have an accent. So yeah. our English is perfect and good. 
And for the youth, we should not think about only working in the, in the country, Kenya. We should think about venturing out of the country. Mm -hmm. Go and work for all those airlines. Bring in the foreign exchange. I think that we need very much, actually. Yeah. We require foreign exchange so much. So there are opportunities all over. And those who would like to venture in the industry and uh, help it grow must think about sitting for international examinations. We do not want to have different standards. Uh, someone has done a hotel management course nine months, others two years, okay. others three years. There must be harmony so that the product offering is the same. So the service that we provide to our clients is basically the same. That is very, very important to us. Okay. And they must embrace languages. A language makes you more marketable. Okay. Yes, we all know that English is universal, but there are clients who get into a country, actually, they cannot speak a single word of English. Mm -hmm. So we need to also embrace international languages to make our students more marketable. All right, Charles. And I want trainers you... must provide industrial attachment. Okay. I want you to hold that thought because I have so many questions after yes. what you've just said. But let's take a break. We'll be back shortly with the conversation.